Hello, this is Gareth from and on behalf of the Army team. It's my great pleasure to introduce Inda Johnson to talk about the Moodle Grey Book, A Friend or Foe. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I do, do appreciate the time you put into it and all the effort that goes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So, um, again, my name is Inda Johnson, and I am the Director of Educational Technology and Curriculum Support here at the Medical University of South Carolina, um, the College of Medicine, and that is in Charleston, South Carolina. So for us right now, it's good afternoon, but I know we're from all over the, the world, so good morning, good evening. I'm glad everybody could join. Um, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Moodle grade book. I called it friend or foe because in um, around my university, it's um, been interesting since we adopted um, Moodle how people perceive and feel about the grade book. So I thought it was a, a good uh, title to kind of segue into this, um, this talk. So just a little bit of background before I um, talk a little bit about the grade book. So at, here at where I am, I'm at a health sciences center, so I'm in medical education, um, but we have a university that also has five or six additional colleges that are all in different healthcare fields. So as you can imagine, our needs are quite a bit different across the colleges. So about um, in 2011, um, we switched over to Moodle. Before then, we were using a grassroots version of WebCT for some people, and Blackboard was being piloted for others. So we had both going on, Blackboard and WebCT. So when we adopted Moodle, we um, adopted Moodle Rooms, which is hosted by Juul. So um, because we needed that, nobody here was um, had enough expertise to actually to build it themselves, but we um, so we needed somebody to host it for us. So that's where we are now, here in 2015, after we've had it. And um, how much more do we know about the gradebook? I don't know. But I know a little bit, and I'd like to talk a little bit about my experience. I use it very differently than a lot of people do, and I have found this out the more and more conferences I've been at and the more Moodle moots. So I thought it'd be interesting just to talk about what I know it can do and kind of how I use it. So first of all, some of the features. Um, the student view of the grade report is a great feature. I find this to be one of the best um, features within the grade book because you can allow the students to see so many different views, um, so many different things, and um, really tailor it to what, how you want to look. Um, there are several different views of the grade book from the teacher perspective, which I'll talk a little bit about that um, a little bit later. Also, the grade thresholds can be manipulated. So um, I love the fact that you can use use point system or you can use scales. You can create your own scales, make it uh, honors pass fail, whatever whatever suits your grading policy. So you have a lot of leeway there. Um, and your graded items can be automatically added or manually added. So this is a big one for me because um, obviously automatically is if you set up an assignment or a quiz or something graded in um, your Moodle course. But for the needs of where I currently am, we do a lot of manually graded items. So I'll talk a little bit about that because that's what we do that's very different than a lot of, um, a lot of other people. So uh, you can also create um, categories and subcategories and um, provide written narrative feedback. You can import and export grades. I'd like to talk about that too pretty heavily because that has been something that has become a big um, lifesaver as of late. So some of the first steps um, when using the grade book. So one of the things I have learned over my um, time in training faculty and staff is that you really have to have a plan in place for what you need. So your course syllabus obviously should drive what the grade threshold should be, um, what the graded items are. But it's really important to have kind of a roadmap to know how you want it to look. I say this because when we first um, set up the grade book, we didn't have a lot of time. We basically adopted it in maybe July and had to go live by like August. And um, we have a lot of students and we report a lot of grades. And so we had to really, I had to really think about how that was going to design, how that was going to look to not be too confusing. So it's really important. And all these things need to be decided before you begin the setup of your um, grade book, just so that you know where you're headed, because it can be overwhelming. So some of the gradebook views I talked about. Um, so the student's view, which is the user report. So this is a sub-tab um, where you can see the individual grader, I mean, individual student's um, report. I really like it because you can look and see what it looks like for, from that student's perspective. So this is kind of a little bit of a glimpse of what, um, how one of ours looks. So you can see um, 
there's uh, what we show. We don't necessarily show a calculated weight, but we show like the grade. Um, and most courses, that's a percentage grade. A lot of times we show the range because we also usually show them their raw points on purpose, just so that if they wanted to, um, if they wanted to see, you know, there was 50 points possible and I got, you know, 45. They can also see the percentage of that. And then, of course, the feedback. We're well, very big in narrative feedback. That's a big part of our um, accreditation standards. So it's something that we want to make sure that we have in place. But this is just a really nice, this is um, just a sample, but it's a really nice report for the students to see. So the other things that they um, have, the grader report. So that's where the grades and feedback can actually be entered if you were manually entering or changing grades. Um, and that's a nice little report that just kind of shows you all of your, um, your students are able to filter it by first name or last name or both. That's really nice. You can also change your preference of your page so you can look at five or you can look at 20. Um, the grade history, this is a newer, um, a newer thing now, but it allows you to view the grades over time. So I can see that this is going to be something that we would utilize um, so we could look at how an assignment is performing over time, you know, maybe over two or three semesters. The Jewel Grade Book. Now, the item, not sure if that is called the same thing in a lot of Moodle instances, because I know that's specific to Moodle Rooms, but I do know with the 2.8 upgrade, I think, that it, um, something that looks just like this came out. So it's kind of a condensed view um, where you're able to, you are able to expand a little bit, but it um, puts everything kind of on a nice one page sheet. You can do a lot of things from there. You can um, change all the grades at once, which is very helpful if you needed to put a pass for everybody or something like that. Um, and you can also, it's very easy to spot check grades in that, in that view. And then the overview report. So that provides uh, students overall grades for all the courses that they are enrolled in. So if I'm student A and I'm enrolled in four courses, I can go to this overview, overview report and I can see my grades in all those courses. So that's nice. And the single view, which allows you to look at a specific assignment or you can add grade and feedback to something specific. Um, it's just another mechanism, another way to do, to add grades or feedback. So um, one of the big things that I like about the Moodle Gradebook is that you do have a lot of um, options with grade thresholds and scales. So if you want to change the grades, um, the grade letters, like so by default, I think it's set to um, like 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 90 is a B, something like that, 80 to 89. You can go in and actually check, change this yourself. This is really nice if you want to report out what a letter grade is also. So like if you, if a student gets um, an 85 on something and you want that to also say, this is equivalent to a B or this is equivalent to a C, if you set these, um, the grade thresholds on the letters tab, you're able to do that. And you don't have to do that. You could turn that function or hide that function from their user report and then it wouldn't be an issue. But it's just an option that you do have. Uh, so another thing that is very useful is the scales um, option. So with the scales, you're able to either, you can use the Moodle preset scale or you it can create a custom scale. A custom scale would be um, if you wanted something to be honors, pass, or fail, or if you wanted it to be high pass, um, low pass, or no pass, whatever you wanted to call it, you could create that scale. The nice thing about this is that you can create as many scales as you need in the course, and you can use them for different um, assignments if that was necessary. So for us, there's some assignments we have that are honors, pass, fail, and that's how we use it. There's others that we have that are just pass or fail, so we can decide how we want to to decipher between the two, but we have that option. So I spoke about that you can automatically grade items, which you can um, when you create your quiz or create a journal assignment or if it's a graded forum assignment, anything like that. The you can set it up to show in the grade book and you can decide where you want to show and it will it will grade there for you. This is a that's a very nice feature. It's um, I like it too because you can move it around. So even if it's um, a graded item and it, you want to move it to a certain a particular category, you can easily do that within the, the setups page on the grade book. So the manually graded items, this is what I want to touch on a little bit more because this is something that I use quite differently than a lot of people do. So on your, um, 
greater report view, there's a setup tab. It's called setup now. It used to be categories and items, I believe, but it's called setup. And at the bottom, you have the option of adding categories and or grade items. The difference between a category and a grade item is a category is going to be kind of like the parent, and anything you put in there is going to calculate into the category total. A grade item is individual graded items, like um, a journal assignment, a writing assignment. Um, the only reason that you would use maybe a category and not just graded items is in the event like how I have it set up. So let me just explain a little bit about how we have it. So um, this is mainly what we use in the first and second year medical education courses because they are part of an integrated curriculum. So all of their curricular components are into one Moodle course. They are graded um, basically on four, if they're called themes, but four kind of courses is something that they get a grade for. But they, these are longitudinal, so they go through the whole year, but they're broken up by blocks. So it's five blocks of this, then five blocks of that, then five blocks of the next thing. At the end of the blocks, they have a written um, exam. So our multiple choice exam. So we had a need to create categories, and within those categories, put graded items. So for example, we have category A, let's say. And category A has within it block exam one, block exam two, block exam three, and it has a few written assignments that went with the first block. All of those um, grades are simply weighted, because that's how we set it up. It didn't have to be set that way, but we did. Are simply weighted together to create a running total for that category. That total is how we decide what grade they get at the end of the semester. So our grading scheme is very complicated, which is why um, we had to kind of come up with a unique way of using the manual graded items. So we we create the categories and the items within the grade book manually. Now there are a few um, items that we that we use in Moodle, like we do some writing assignments, some journal assignments that are graded within Moodle, but I would say probably 80% of what we do is outside of Moodle. So we have to create all those categories and grade items, and we have to um, decide and put the, the points value, um, how we're going to calculate it, all of that. That's why I said a roadmap is so important. It was for us, because if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have been able to um, get it set up. So just real quick, are there any questions about that part? Because that's a big part that we do very different than a lot of um, people use it. And I don't know that a lot of people know that you can use it to that extent, um, but you definitely can. No questions about that? OK. Just make sure, because I know it's kind of going maybe one of those quick things. OK, so um, the other thing is, um, entering grades. So this, when you use manual um, categories and manual grade items, now you have to manually enter grades, which is also different. So one would say, why would you even want to go through this? Well, we have 180 students in both years, so 180 in first, 180 in second, um, in second year, and our exams are so robust that it's not really, the quiz feature in Moodle does not really do what we need it to do. It's not robust enough. It doesn't report out quite enough statistics for us for what we do. So we use an exam um, outside of Moodle, which is why we have to, to manually enter these grades. So everybody, the faculty and the staff here, are very well versed in entering manual grades. We had to do this for a long time, actually put in for each student at least four or five grades per block, um, putting in narrative feedback. All of that stuff we used to do by hand. Before, which I'll get to that later, importing was really working well. But um, I do like that you can easily enter grades and you can easily enter feedback. So if you had to change anything, if you needed to update anything, you can easily go in, edit it, change it, save it, they can see it. So this I was talking about, this is great, I was talking about how sort of we have categories and graded items set up. So if you can see this, um, the so an example of this would be so here this right here is our category 
within our category are these graded items here. So all of those graded items roll together to give a total for this top circle category right here. Um, it is simply weighted because as you can see, our points are not the same for every event. That's because it's dependent upon how many exam questions there were. Um, so we didn't want them to weight equally, obviously, because like the one is a practical exam, it's only 10 points. We don't want that to weight equally against 70 points. So it's simply weighted, so it's weighted appropriate based on how much it is. But as you can see, we have this for each. So here's another category, and then the other graded items that go within that category. Now we are in a competency-based um, model, so we, this is honors pass fail, but during this period we do put up actual point value grades so they can see what their actual points are to accumulate to get to um, their honors pass or fail. So some of these things like right here, this is these are grade items that really go with this above category right here, but these grade items right here are um, on a scale of honors pass fail and they do not equal into the grade as far as um, they do not go into the written grade they are a part of you have to pass it to pass the course but you don't it's not a part it doesn't calculate into the grade so that's why they're outside of the other the category they're really graded items on their own they're not really underneath the category so that might, might look a little confusing but you can also you can change things too you know we have this on 100 points scale because we know we want the category ultimately to get to 100 points now we do um, use another method which I really I won't go to too much but we um, when they get their overall grade for like one exam that would that is calculations over four different kind of courses we don't call them that but that's what it is four different courses so we roll those all together and those are not on our point scale those are based out of how many actual points they were so um, for example a block one exam could say it, the, the overall points were 350 and it would show that you've got 325 and tell you a percentage of that. We show them that too, even though that's not actually how we report grades out, but we just let them see how they did on the overall block. Yes, so the question, great question, can you have categories have different aggregation than the course total? Yes, I actually do not use the course total because um, it's not for us this is set up separately these are literally four if you think of them as courses for us we really don't call them courses but that's what they are so this one up here this is one this is two this is three the here the fourth is down here oh yeah it's on here is right here so for us we don't use the category the course total because if you did it would be some weird number that means nothing to us um, so I have that actually hidden from them so they can't see it, but you can, your, your categories are all set in their own little space. So, and you can have the, the aggregation based on whatever you want and it can be different. Really, you, it, yours won't do that since the 2.7. So we're on 2.8. I did make sure to know what version that was in. And I was using this on the version, but I think we might have skipped a version. Um, I'd be interested to know what problems you were having because um, there might be a way to fix it. I'm, I mean, I know the initial setup of this was very, very cumbersome, but, um, but we got it to work. And like I said, I don't use the course total, so um, that might be something that we'd have to mess with a little bit. But yeah, we could definitely could talk about it and see what, um, what we could do. Okay. So importing grades, I am so happy to say that um, this has been improved so much that um, I, it's made my life so much easier. So we used to, like I said, manually enter literally for well, one student, it would be at least four grades, but usually up to six or seven. And we had to go into each of those little grade items and enter their grade. There was all kinds of room for human error and it took forever. So recently, within this academic year, really started importing grades. And I have found this to be the easiest thing to do. Um, my biggest issue is matching up our names just because students change their names, get married, and all that stuff. So we have a time doing that. But um, I use the importing grades all the time. 
So now there's three, in, in the current version I'm in, there's three options. There's the CSV file, there's the paste from spreadsheet, which that part is new, and there's the XML file upload. Um, one of the first things I always do, though, and I tell everybody this when I think of ex importing grades, is first to export out an Excel of um, your grade items. So, for instance, we have all of our um, categories and grade items already on there. So what we export out is um, the student's name, and we have a unique identifier that pertains to our um, enrollment services here. So we, it, it exports their name, the first and last name, their unique identifier, and their email address. Then whatever categories or great items that I'd pick for it to also export out, it exports those, in just the header. So once that's exported, then I match up, make sure the names are matched up, and then put the grades on the, the spreadsheet. So I was originally um, importing the CSV file, but for the past three times I have just been pasting from the spreadsheet, and I would say it's been working like a charm. Um, it's very easy. You literally copy and paste. You've already got it formatted because you, you exported it from Moodle, so it likes the format. Um, you, I match them up by user ID number. I don't match them up by name, only because like we have several people who have similar names or the same name. So um, I match it up by their unique identifier and then upload them. So this has been working beautifully. Like I said, in the past, it was a little bit difficult for me. Um, it wasn't working like it should have or been quite as easy, but it's been very easy. Um, I have also uploaded feedback, narrative feedback, and I have uploaded um, a scale. So as long as you have it set how you want it, so if you have it set on an honors pass fail scale and you upload to that area, it will upload just fine, and so will the written feedback. For those of you that haven't used it because of the fear of it not working right, I, I understand because we were like that for several years, but it has been working very nicely lately. So some of the lessons learned, I would say, from the beginning um, is really to understand the needs that you, for your grade book. Uh, I know it sounds funny because we all have um, grading um, policies in our syllabus, but you really have to understand how you want it to look for the students because there's so many little things that you might not have thought about. You know, do you want them to see the raw points? Do you want them to see percentages? Do you want them to see an actual letter grade? Do you want them to see all three of those? None of those, one of those. Um, you know, you can make it to where they can see the course total or not see the course total. Do you want them to be able to, um, uh, there's just a, a, a vast array of things that you can do and you can um, add class rank to it. We don't do that because we're in competency based, so we don't actually do that, but a lot of people do. So you could have class rank as a part of it. Um, we do have the integration with our Moodle system to um, report grades back to our um, enrollment services. I don't personally use that because of the way that we have our course set up, but if we only had it set up with just, if this was just one course, not a combined integrated course, then we would do that. People in other colleges do that here. It seems to work great. Um, the other thing is I would say test and test and test again before you go live. Had a lot of instances of we thinking things worked well and we um, opened it up to the students and it didn't work. That's the other thing. We completely closed the gradebook down while we're working in it and uploading grades. Just because when students get in there, it seems to slow our system down a bit. So um, we close it down until we're ready to open it. But um, we, you know, you can view in different theme and different um, views. You can see if things calculate correctly. You can double check it based on your own calculations, which is the next point. Um, and you can also, after you upload all the grades or add them, you can export them and check them. And that's a biggie for us. We always check columns, you know, is anything over 100% because it shouldn't be? Is any point over this? And it's easy to um, export and check them. Um, the last thing I would say about this lessons learned is that the gradebook has a lot of features. Um, you may not need to use all of them. So I would say start simplistic. You know, use what you know you need, and then as you get the feel for it, you can see where you might need more. I mean, you can have things, um, you can have extra credit components, you can have things weighted only, you know, 5% of a grade, or you can do a, a lot of amazing things with it. I think you just have to make sure you have the, the good structure and the bones set up, and then from there, you can grow and, and create it how you want it to be. Uh, I just remember when we very first set this up four or five years ago, sitting there kind of like banging my head on the desk thinking, how am I going to make this all work the way in which I needed it to? And it worked fine, it was just trying to figure it out. So I just say, again, you just really need to know what kind of roadmap for what you need.
So that was um, all I was going to, to talk about with this, just kind of a overview and what works best for me and how I use it differently than others. So I'm open to any questions anybody has or a different way you use it or suggestions. Okay. Oh, sorry, somebody has something. Yep. Hi, it's Gareth from the Army team. Just while waiting for people to pose some questions. And so, thank you again, once again, India, for an informative and, you know, the Grey Book always found a very complicated part of Moodle, which is a, you know, a very difficult to get into it. So, you know, thank you very much for your time and uh, all the effort you put into the presentation. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.